everyone. We're live this time uh, for real. Uh, welcome to the Felix Comic Art Podcast Live Episode 5. This is our Daniel Warren Johnson Transformers episode. And uh, it's all Transformers today. Uh, this is a big day for Daniel Warren Johnson, for Transformers fans, and for Transformers the property. Uh, we're going to get into it. Dan is running a little late. He did a sign today at his uh, hometown shop, Challengers Comics in Chicago. Um, and he told me they they sold out. Uh, and we've been hearing about sellouts from retailers and fans all across the country. I hope everyone picked up their copies. Um, the first printing, Skybound announced it was 153,000 copies. And they've already announced a second printing because the first printing sold out uh, at the distributor level. And right now, uh, it's getting hard to find in shops. Um, so, yeah, pretty pretty big deal. Uh, friend of the show, fellow collector, Lance Suarez. A lot of you may know Lance. Uh, called me today from the road. He'd hit four separate shops to try and put together a set of the regular cover and the variants. And uh, he had to go to four shops, and he's still missing one. He's missing the sketch cover variant. So if anyone out there has one, uh, I'm sure Lance would appreciate uh, if you have an extra one, reach out. Um, but yeah, it's been uh, it's been bananas. Um, so hopefully uh, Dan can can join us soon. But in the meantime, uh, let's see who we got in the room. Uh, hello, uh, just my glasses, Cat Wes. One, Marcus Way, Johannes P, Klaus Vandeven, Stuart Henderson, Jay Lucian, bootlegging is a habit, Richard Montfort, Dan Tancredi, uh, Pat L, Michael Patrick Sullivan, Yams, who's right here, B Flow, Chris Lopez, Jiggy Cruz, all the way from the Philippines, our boy Jersey Lambo, Victor Bracamontes, um, who else? Patrick Bosworth, Comic Art Channel. Uh, our buddy Jason, who is actually producing the show, he's in the background um, running the stream yard for us. Uh, and he goes by Comic Art Channel on YouTube. Definitely check it out, subscribe. Michael T., Jason Williams, um, Yo Curry, Reba J. from Australia, David Kwok, Ryan Michael, The Diamond Chris Productions, Soundwave 919. That's fitting. Uh, Andy Brining, Lucas Cook, Scoot Starnes, Bill Johnson, Elijah Powell, Brian P., Mike Sitchie, Morgan Hatfield, Stuart Henderson. A lot of people here tonight. ML, Michael Patrick Sullivan. I say that already. Adriel Moreland, Doug Fluger, and the Spectral Void. If I miss anyone, I apologize. Jay Morgan, Blast Whip, Andy Coasters, Gallo, Justin Senna, Miss Casper, Michael T., Decam Ag, doing the best I can. Stingray, Checky Valdez, just Mike, Comic Art Boston. Comic Art Boston. Yeah, from uh, from over in Asia. We got we got people from all over the world tuning in. I know it, time zones aren't necessarily uh, convenient, but definitely appreciate you guys tuning in. Uh, JQ, QU fan, Carl Sodergren, Christopher Kohler. We got more people coming in. Christine F, dumbest name. If you say so. Uh, well, it's Chris Ouellette, Root Jack Art, the number eight, Josh Ewald, Andrew Lancaster, Mark V, Lance McMinn, I am Brunson. We're getting to the end here. Ryan Griffin, Big Fat Bot, Daniel in Cardona, and Pal Cards, Comics, and Games, Michael DeFonte. Okay, I think that's it. I think I got everyone. Thank you for coming in. I am actually trying to kill a little time, giving uh, Dan a chance to get here. You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna call him while while you're all in here. Hopefully, he didn't fall asleep. Yeah, that's a that's a that's a that's a that's a big turnout. Wouldn't wouldn't what if he just like put his set down and, and crushed? <laughs> Well, we still have the art. If we don't have Dan, I promise you, you will get to see the art. Uh, 
a uh, sound wave 919 question when will dwgb dwjb at nycc oh, hang on a second i reached it he sent me shot me a text on my way two minutes boy big star wow. now fashionably late okay two minutes uh Two minutes, we can Okay, minutes. when will DWG be at NYCC? So Dan is not an official guest at NYCC, but I may have talked him into doing a special signing or two with us. Not sure which times yet, but it'll be um, going to try to shoot for Thursday and Friday, possibly Saturday, and he is gone on Sunday. He will not be there on Sunday, but he is going to be doing a couple of panels uh, supporting the book with Hasbro. And then uh, a couple of signings with us, um, which I'll talk about in a second. Soundwave nine one nine says, "Are you selling the original pages from the first issue?" Yes, I. Yes, we are. Soundwave nine one nine, and that's what uh, tonight really is all about. You're going to get to see all the pages from the first issue. First issues just came out today. I really couldn't show up before, but now that it's out, you're all going to get a show. Um, you know, we could have sold the first issue complete. As you know, we sell a lot of complete issues, but we are breaking this one up or giving everyone a chance to uh, get a page from this incredible first issue. Uh, afterwards, um, you know, some issues may sell complete, but no matter what, Dan is on the book as an artist for six issues. He's drawing the first six issues and then he's just going to be um, continuing writing duties, but someone else is gonna take over as artist. Let's see, Diamond Chris says, I bought all the A, B, C, D, and the ratio variants at my own comic store. Just missing the S, D, C, C variant. Yep, um, we're gonna actually talk about that too today, Diamond Chris. You'll be glad you tuned in. Um, Robert Zanzi, hello, says, uh, awesome, hope to meet DWG in New York. Hello, Stacey DeLong and Jay Nunya. Says, sup, dog, saw you guys at Comic Bug. Yeah, we were just in L.A. this past weekend. Trad Moore flew in from uh, from out of town, so came to the Bay Area. We did, uh, how many signings did we do? We did three signings in the Bay and then flew to L.A. to do two signings and uh, really just hang out and have fun. That's, that was the whole point. Uh, question is, uh, who would you like to see take over after she's six and followed by Jersey Lamb? Do they know who will be taking over Dan at our, I think they know. Um, I don't, I'm not sure we can talk about it yet, but I'm pretty sure they know. Uh, Diamond Chris says, will the Transformers number two variant get a one in 100 ratio variant or Transformers number two get, um, please say no, my wallet can't handle it. I, I don't know. I don't know, Diamond Chris. Um, if you got the 1 in 100 variant for issue 1, then that was the uh, Ian Bertram cover, and you're going to see the original for that tonight, too. Mike Sitchie says, I got the last issue at my LCS day. I'm telling you, it's crazy. If you didn't pick up uh, an issue at your LCS today, you might be out of luck, but I do know some stores were um, limiting uh, the number of copies for customers and stretch it out a little bit. So how does the art being sold work? I'm new to Felix Comic Art. So is it the actual original sketches or prints of the uncolored art? Well, Daniel, sounds like you're kind of new to original art itself. Um, by the end of the show, hopefully you'll have a good idea. You know, it's you'll you'll get to see what original art is. It's um, art that it's the actual physical art that Daniel created to help to produce the comic book. Andy Coaster says, was out of town for my comic shop today. Missed the release. Excited to pick it up when I get back. Yeah, and, and like I said, they did announce a second print. So you can get, you can, you can you should be able to get a copy. It just won't have the, uh, the DWGA cover. Okay, Jason, um, you let us know when Dan comes, okay? Uh, I'm just going to, I'm just going to get started on, on our show. Uh, to show off some of the stuff we're going to have. Oh, and there he is. Hello, and there hello he is. everyone. DWJ, man of the Woo. hour. How you doing? Did you have to wash up? Um, you, um, know you know what? Uh, 
I watched. I, I was watching, watching my wrestling, wrestling show, wrestling and, uh, and there was an there overrun, was overrun by like, by like five minutes, five and minutes, I, I had to I finish had to it because it, it was a really good. Uh, <laughs> it was a really, good, really episode, good episode. So, so. You, there's a you know you can't hit pause on the DVR. But did it did it did it turn out the way you wanted? It did. It did. It did. It did. Uh, there's uh, a really good really heel good right now, Christian Cage. Uh, and uh, his, his old, old buddy, buddy uh, Edge, Edge or Adam, Adam Copeland, Copeland, as he's as called he's now, they re- re- they almost, they almost reunited, reunited tonight, tonight, but, but it was all a ruse. Uh, so, uh, so I do I like do my like wrestling, wrestling, and I do, and like, I do my like, like, my like my drama. drama. So, so yeah. yeah, and I do like your shirt. I, I approve. Let's see. Yeah, there you go, baby. Our SDFC 2023 shirt. Fantastic. You look great, Nick. Um. Uh, let's see. Diamond Chris asks, can you guys announce when you guys are doing these streams like way earlier? I had to take my break off my job to be here and I would have taken the day off. I knew you guys were doing this. Diamond Chris. Um, so these things kind of happen on the fly sometimes. And I not, I'm not always able to, you know, uh, give a lot of advance notice because I don't have a lot of advance notice. It's a matter of getting all the pieces together. Dan was at his signing. He had to get back in time. I was going to get yams over here. You know, Jason has to help us. So just just worked out well. You know, we're actually going to maybe do it tomorrow night. But um, Jason wasn't able to do it tomorrow night. I think Dan had something going on, too. So anyway, this just sort of happened on the fly. But otherwise, uh, if you follow me on social media or subscribe to the newsletter, um, you know, I always try to give some notice at least. Okay, uh, Dan, so I, I talked to everyone about uh, you doing a signing, issue one selling out everywhere. We're hearing from everyone. You saw it yourself at your store. People in the comments are saying, you know, they got the last copy. Um, I talked about my, my, my buddy, Lance Suarez, who drove around to four stores here in the Bay to try to, try to put together a set of uh, the regular cover and the variants. Oh and, my god! Oh and he wasn't able to get the sketch cover, um, and of course the issue is now into its second printing. And you know, I said something. I tweeted something after you sent me the PDF for Transformers One, and I had to share my feelings immediately on social media, like a like a like like a like a Gen Z person. Of course, and, of course. And um, what I said was, you know, I I picked up. Dark Knight Returns number one off the stands. And this reminded me a lot of that, you know, that that reading experience and uh, just the overall feeling I got after reading it. And Bleeding Cool took that tweet and, and made it sound like I, I said, you know, trans, Daniel Warren Johnson's Transformers number one is the next Dark Knight Returns. And I well, just want to well, be very, bleeding, cool bleeding cool doing, doing that. that. Oh, man. Oh, man. Okay. Well, I Never just heard of that one before. before. I just want to be very clear. That's not what I meant. Um, there will likely never be another Dark Knight Returns. But what I did mean is that, you know, back then I was reading comics in the in, in the early to mid 80s and, and Dark Knight Returns came out in 86. But prior to that, it was not a huge book. Like these days, you, you tell that to people, they don't believe it because Batman's the number one book on the stands and it's been that way for a while. But back then, very few people cared. It was kind of a corny character. DC's big books at the time were uh, New Teen Titans and uh, Alan Moore's Swamp Thing. And uh, then you probably had three or four other titles before before people cared about uh, Batman. Um, there's an echo when Dan talks. Can you lower your speaker volume? Is that uh, me or him? Okay, Jason, that's you because, because I think, I think you're, you're not, not using, using headphones, headphones Felix. Felix. Okay, all right. I, I put the I put the speaker down. Okay. I actually got a pair of those, so I'll use them next okay. time. Okay. Um, I can still I can hear it. Hear it's it. just it's softer, softer now. now. Okay. Um, but Dark Knight Returns came out and changed everything uh, about Batman. And since then, uh, we see Bat, we see and perceive Batman totally differently. And that's thanks to Frank Miller. Um, I. I think that's going to be the same with Transformers, and the the you know it's 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 also analogous in that this is like a forty something year old property, um, and and Transformers more than Batman. Batman went through that phase where 
you know, the Silver Age and the and the TV show where it just really became, you know, jo jokey. Um, Transformers just has never really been a respected property, you know, not amongst, you know, serious comic book fans. It's it's a toy property. It's kind of seen as a kiddie joke property. And in terms of the art, outside of the very early Marvel art that people have nostalgia for, nobody cares about Transformers art. Um, you look at like the biggest collectors in the hobby, and we, you know I've had a bunch of them on the podcast, like a Dave Mandel or an Albert, or uh, just just people with with really high level collections. Andy Robbins, you know Jersey Lambo in the room. You know how many of them have uh, Transformers art in their collection? You know it's a it's a fat zero because no you you couldn't give away Transformers art. Now all of a sudden. That's completely changed. And I'll also say that, uh, you know, when you told me that you got offered Transformers and you were thinking about doing it, um, I hope you will confirm to the audience that I encouraged you. You know, I encouraged you because I know you love Transformers. You love Optimus Prime. You love them as toys. You love the cartoons. You love the movie. You know, it's, it, you're all about Transformers. Meanwhile, as the art rep, you know, I really didn't think the art was going to sell. Um, but that's okay because I feel like it's a career bucket list item for you, so you should do it. Well, I was completely wrong, and um, it's surprising even to me, you know. Um, and I think when we do this drop, it's gonna it's gonna surprise a lot of people. Um, so yeah, you know, there's this thing now that they call the kayfabe effect, thanks to uh, the kayfabe YouTube channel. Uh, well, I, I will coin the DWJ effect. Because now Transformers, people all of a sudden care. Now they want it, you know? Um, and, uh, you know, you could have let us down with, uh, with, and I know it's not easy. It's not, you know, creator-owned. You're, um, or you can decide what you want to do. You know, you're sort of under some uh, uh, mandates from editorial, from the, the licensor, from Hasbro. Um, but I, I think I think this is you got to do DW a DWJ Transformers story. Um, yeah, I you know I, I I went into this thinking this doesn't have to be a great DWJ comic. It just has to be a great Transformers comic. And I think what's and you know I, I just I'll tell you, just let the audience know I, I've read ahead a little bit. I'm just, I'm going to say not only will this be the best Transformers comic ever. I think this is going to be the best Transformers story in any medium. And it wouldn't surprise me, you know, if oh, these God, comics yeah. end up as uh, storyboards for a future movie when they finally get smart and use the G1 designs for a movie. Um, you know, and as far as that goes, this is like James Cameron doing Transformers and, and not Michael Bay. So anyway, uh, that was my whole spiel. I'm, I'm super, super excited. I think this, uh, this trade... It's going to be an evergreen. Um, yeah. And, 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 you know, all of you guys who are in the chat, who are going to be checking out the drop, it's, you know, I think it's, uh, it's something you guys will remember. It's, a, it's, it's going to be, it's going to be really cool. That James That's Cameron compliment. Uh, uh, I think I'll I think take, I'll to, take my to my grave. Thank you, Felix. Thank you, Felix. All right. I, I had a lot, I had a lot to get off my chest, so. I'm, I'm I'm just super excited. Thanks to everyone for uh, for putting up with that, and 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 uh, it's going to be more Dan than me from from here on out. But I also I want to talk about uh, what we're going to be offering at this drop, and I'm going to start showing things. Okay, um, it used to be that uh, you know when you do a drop, you have like 20 pages plus a cover. And, you know, there are maybe about 20 people who, if you're lucky, you know, you sell out. You got 20 people who are interested and can, who can work collectors who can afford the art. Um, these days, there are so many people who are, you know, into comic art, especially uh, DWJ art, that um, that's, that's not enough. So what we try to do is have more options for fans and collectors. Um, not everyone's going to be able to get a page, but you know, people, there will be chance for people to get something cool from this drop. And you can say, yes, I got this from 
the DWJ Transformers number one drop. And the first thing is, um, thanks. Um, is this came in? These came in. It's our um, Daniel Warren Johnson exclusive variant cover. Heck yeah! Heck for yeah. Transformers number one, and you can see it opens up, and uh, it's a double cover. It's a wraparound cover. We have got two versions. We have the regular color version, and we have what we call the original art replica. This is this is this is an exact uh, copy of the art. Now, I mean, it's smaller. It's not the original art size, but it's not cleaned up. It, this is uh, artist edition style. Um, we 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 had 500 sets set aside for an online pre-order, all sold out. Except, uh, turns out we had some duplicate orders, and we had a couple flakes, so we have some extra copies. So if you missed out on that drop, you will get a chance to get it at the Transformers number one drop. Um, and these will be signed and remarked by Dan when I see him next week in New York. So this is this is sort of uh, the uh, you know the the entry point, the kind of budget option for collectors. This will be available. What we'll have about a, a solid, solid option. option. Super, Super cool. Super cool. Yeah, yeah. The Ballin exclusive variant cover. Really proud of this. This is, this is the first um, variant cover we've ever done. You know, just it's not really it's not really our thing, but this was such a cool uh, opportunity um, for Dan to go nuts. And the funny thing is, uh, when he did this, uh, can, can we talk about this? Uh, that's you know, Skybound, sure, sure. Sky, Skybound, Skybound, like said thumbs down. You, they didn't. They didn't want him to use this because they didn't want, I don't know, they they they, they didn't want uh, Optimus Prime dunking or something, and it took Dan uh, a little, you know, Dan is Dan Dan's not going to raise his voice, but he can be persuasive, and and thankfully um, they came to their senses and we got this awesome cover. All right, the uh, it was uh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah it was I, I think Skyvan was just Skyvan afraid was it was going to be a little too silly. silly. Um, um, and I was like, well, like, well, this is an this opportunity, opportunity to, to do something, something really, really fun, and fun and different, and different. That's, not that's not just Optimus just standing, standing in like a, a cloud, cloud of, of dust, dust and looking and really, really cool. cool. This is a, this different, is a different kind, kind of, badass. of badass. Yeah, this is, uh, uh, you know, cars turning into robots and they're worried about uh, silly, you know. <laughs> so, anyway. Do you have your headset? Um, you know, something I... I you know, could you talk to Dan for a second? Because huh? everybody's, they can hear it, but we can't. So. Okay, okay. It sounds, it sounds yeah, great here. Oh, sorry, sorry I'm, everybody I'm, else. I think Felix we'll is great at going with this and uh, not worrying about it. Felix is great, great at dropping, dropping art. art but, uh, but, uh, <laughs> the tech, technological aspect yeah, right. of the live stream. Uh, congratulations, <laughs> Uh Congratulations. I can't believe everything's selling out. I mean, I can believe it, but uh, I'm so stoked. This is uh, just amazing. Oh, dude. I'm so excited to uh, the first finally have it out there. Like... <laughs> um, I actually I'm, ex have, uh, I'm excited I'm to have it out there, there for sure. Um, um, it's really, really cool. cool. Like, like my phone's been blowing up all day. It's nice. Uh, people are just so excited about it. It's very exciting. It's very great. Uh, not, not, now you can hear though. Huh? Well, I'll grab a, uh, okay, I've got the. Um, I've got uh, ear pods, but I, I just don't like them. I'm sticking with the telemarketer headset. How's that, everyone? That's Is that fine. better? Hope that's better. Yep, that's way better. Thanks, okay, Felix. Cool, cool. All right. Um, the next thing we have, and this is this is a surprise um, because we haven't shown this off yet, but they just arrived. And it is, someone mentioned the... Uh, San Diego Ashcan, we got them. We got them. We got them CG seed, and they all came 9.8. They're uh, signed, signed and remarked by Dan. Um, these are going for a mint on eBay, and they're not even yellow labeled. They're not even signed and sketched by Dan. These are signed and sketched by Dan, and we're not going to charge as much as what they go for on eBay. But uh, I'm going to show you a group picture I took earlier. Jason, you there? Can you uh, can you put that up? 
You'll see how many we got. You'll see how many are available. Boom. 20 of them. All oh, individual. Wow. They're like uh, they're like fingerprints almost. I mean, because every signature is different. Every remark is a little different. And they all came back 9.8s. Uh, so there will be 20 of those available. They are all different, aren't they? Yep, they are. A little, a little bit of a variation in each one is like, so I have the screen like really close to my face. Some are straight on, some are to the, from the side, some are on the top, some are on the bottom. Yep. Yeah, good times. It's a fun I, experiment know, for me to like, you know, come up with new ways. I think my favorite way to draw Optimus Prime, a little inside baseball, is from the side because uh, it's just easy. It's, it's, it's easiest, but also I really just like the Optimus' side profile. So there you go. Um. And and we were there when you were, uh, you know, drawn on them. So that was, was great. a San Diego Comic Con. Yeah, good times. Okay. Um, I got. Uh, let's get into the art. You ready to get into the art? Let's get into the art. Okay. Um, Jason, slide one, please. All right. So for those of you who don't know how this all came about, um, Skybound is Robert Kirkman's company, and they got the license to uh, Transformers and G.I. Joe. Um, as part of their pitch, they used uh, DWJ art, which we sold uh, over the summer. Congrats to Marcus Way, who got that. Um, yeah, the, and, the Bruticus uh, and uh, Starscream cover. And I think I, I, I think that had a, that played a big part in uh, Skybound getting licensed. But um, what Skybound I'd like to did, think so as well. I, I, I think Kirkman is a genius at this sort of thing. And um, it was like a stealth announcement. And what they did was Robert Kirkman has a new book out called Void Rivals. And we, you know, it's ostensibly some sci-fi story. Don't know what it's about. Except at the end of the first issue, it, Jetfire appears. And that's when everyone knew, oh, my God, you know, Skybound got uh, Transformers. What's going to happen? And then they announced that Daniel's doing... Um, you know, relaunching the Transformers comic. Um, but for that Void Rivals issue one, uh, the, the main Transformer who showed up is Jetfire. And this is Dan's, uh, it's just, this is the San Diego Comic-Con variant, right? I'm pretty sure. Um, yes, I think, yep, yep. Okay. Is that what he says? All right, so yep, San Diego um, that, that's, Void that's, one. that is Daniel's um, first, I guess technically the first uh, Energon Universe published cover. Yep. Okay. They also use this uh, for the, they sent uh, a bunch of Energon Universe Void Rivals uh, promotional posters to comic book stores and they used this as, a, as an image for it. Cool. Like a promo poster. I think I've seen yep. that. Okay. Um, My dad's in oh, the chat. Oh, and surprise, this is surprise. a Steve Johnson. I was the person, other than Dan's mom, who saw him draw his first Optimus Prime. I was there when. Yeah, how old were you when you drew your first Optimus Prime? Gosh, I must have been first, second grade, maybe. First is grade. You, is, is, is your dad one of those dads who's now taking credit for his son's success? Like, uh, you know, I got him into Transformers. I got him his first Optimus Prime. I made him watch the cartoon. He definitely knew that. He he showed me. Sorry, excuse me. It's nine o'clock here. Um, he showed me Star Wars and he introduced me to Star Wars. So that was the big thing that my dad introduced me to. But Transformers was all my own, stumbling onto it like a TV after school, you know. Um, okay, next uh, slide, Jason. And this is another Void Rivals number one cover, also featuring Jet Fire. And I think this might actually be the first published Energon Universe cover. This was the one in 100 variant for Void Rivals number one. That's right. Yep. So I think one this is actually, um, yeah, I think this is actually the very first one. But in any case, um, there you go. That, that leg, it's not Jetfire's left leg, but the leftmost leg on Jetfire, mm -hmm. that really gave me some problems. I'm mean, really happy with it now. I think I knocked it out of the park, but I was struggling with that left leg, and 
I, I, I'm thankfully I got it. Okay, so um, I, I mentioned earlier that we really want this to be a big event for Transformers fans, and um, you know we we invited other friends to the party. Uh, so next slide, Jason. Ooh, and this is this is Ryan Barry's cover to Void Rivals number one. And if you don't know who Ryan Barry is, he's a young up and coming artist. Um, we've been working with him. He, if all things go well, he'll be joining uh, Felix Comic Art when he gets his comic done. Uh, but certainly Skybound knows who he is, and they noticed, and that's his cover. Pretty cool. A little different style from yours. Big Fat Bot is asking a question. If Carly is meant to be Asian in this new universe, and yes, that was the goal. Uh, Asian people are hard to draw, so I'm doing my best. Um, I got some practice with Lona Steel Rose and do a powerbomb, but yeah, that's the, that was the goal. So just for people who were wondering. Cool, cool. Um, let's uh, let, let's go, Dan, to... Uh... So let's go, uh, Jason. Next slide. Ooh. And this is a killer. This is a killer That's cover. Great. I mean, this is, you know, this is when you're when you're a kid playing with the toys. This is the sort of thing you imagine. Here it is, actually uh, manifested, rendered on paper by the great Cliff Chang. And I also just, like how he illustrated the uh, van, the heavy metal style van. There's little, it's like, uh, Cliff was like, he got it. So cool. He got all that little detail in there. So Cliff, uh, is the right age, you know, when Transformers came out, like you're actually even a little young for Transformers. Cliff was right age and he loved it. He loved those G1 things. You can see it come through on this. Um, hundred percent, you know, uh, I've actually been monitoring the reviews because there's been an embargo until the uh, comics has been released. So today the floodgates yeah. opened on the reviews and they're just uh, through the roof and yeah. not just from comics fans, but also from Transformers fans. And I will tell you that they Transformers fans as a whole are like notorious for being extremely obsessive and hard to please. Um, but they're digging it, uh, you know, so. I think this is a very exciting day for, for folks. All right. Yeah, Transformers uh, fans are, um, no offense, Transformers fans, you are a little infamous. Uh, I'm doing my best to keep you all happy. Uh, at the end of the day, I did make this book for me. That's why I said yes to the project and is why I've been working so hard on it. And I can only hope that other people join on in excitement, which seems to be happening. So I'm very grateful for that. Um, and that includes the fellow Transformers fans. Welcome, guys. And uh, next next slide is by the great Ryan Otley of Invincible Fame. This this must have been exciting for you, Dan, to have to have Ryan do a cover for your book. You know what's funny is I didn't see it until I was live at a panel and I geeked out with everybody else who was there. This looks so good. It must have taken him so much time too. Jeez. Crazy detail on this thing. We were all, I saw that and I turned to Sean, my editor, and I was like, Hasbro let him draw that? <laughs> so good on Hasbro and good on Ryan for uh, that's it's so, it looks so good. That is like punching out uh, the guts, you know? Pretty crazy. We got uh, Justin Senna in the room, says TF diehard here, and I'm so excited for this. This uh, iteration. Yeah. All right. All right. Jersey Lambo with the, with the, with the, exactly. Jersey Lambo says, DWJ is like the need, the uh, pleasing and impossible to please fan base for sure. I always said, uh, you know, I love that director because, you know, he took on the two most difficult, no win propositions in sci fi movies adapting Dune. And, and making a sequel to Blade Runner. I mean, it's like, you'd be a fool to tackle either one. Not only did he did both, you know, they, they were fantastic. So um, good. 
I guess that's you, Dan. Well, Dune was one of my dude. His take on Dune is one of my favorite science fiction movies, like in probably a decade. I mean, so so incredible. Uh, next slide is a big one, and it's literally big. Look at the size of this thing. It's it's uh, Transformers number one secret oh. variant cover by the great Ian Bertram of so the good. Eisner Award winning Ian Bertram of Little Bird fame and soon Precious Metal. I mean, this is like getting a, a real artiste to draw Transformers. Uh, this this cover Skybound would not show. You know, they they had like a big secret bar across it because there is a bit of a spoiler on here. I'm not gonna if you haven't read it, just there there is a bit of a spoiler. But this is uh, this is a magnificent cover. I mean, they're all amazing, but 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 we got wall power here, folks. Yeah, 18 by really 24. Good. This sucker is huge. That's awesome. It okay. is recognizable Stingray in a big way. Uh, next slide, Jason. Okay, now this one, this one's cute. This one's fun. It's 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 actually way smaller than 18 by 24. It's even smaller by 11 by 17. This cover is by an artist named Derek Hunter. Now, that's not a name most people will know because, um, you know, He's he's done comics, but he's not really a comics guy. He's an animator. He's one, he was one of the lead guys on Adventure Time, and so of course he's got uh, a lot of fans amongst artists. And you know, people love Adventure Time. I loved Adventure Time. I loved all those um, Cartoon Network shows back in the day. Um, and this is his cover. Now, the thing about this cover is that uh, it's right now an inventory cover. It will likely be published at some point. We're just not sure when. Um, but right now it is unpublished and we're going to price it like an unpublished piece. So uh, you could get the jump on this. I talked to Derek. I said, you know, we could sell it now uh, at an unpublished price or just wait till they uh, publish it and you can get more. I, I left it up to him. And he said, you know what? Just let it go now to a fan who will really appreciate it and they'll get it at a decent price. So this is... Um, Who's that knocking out uh, Optimus? Everything, every other cover is Optimus, like like punching the guts out of Starscream. Who's this? Who's this getting payback? Is that Star Starscream? I feel like that could be Star Starscream, but maybe it could also be um, Skywarp. Okay, all right. Well, the purple please. and black one. Okay. Nick Patara has a great story beaten out. Since I'm the writer, can I have Soundwave drop someone in this cassette deck and rewind their brains and guts to bits? It's a great idea. I might have to steal that. Uh, that is a great bit, and you heard it here first. This is uh, we're we're workshopping the future uh, Transformers, you know, movie movie scenes. Um, I'm already I'm already making the jump, Dan. From yeah, it, it's it's I'm it's going to be in the comp, but then it'll be in the movie. Um, there. you know, like Transformers amongst hardcore comics fans, art collectors, not super respected, but it is. It is one of the most well-known properties out there. Uh, yeah, you know, if you took like Transformers versus say Guardians of the Galaxy, nobody knew what Guardians of the Galaxy was, but just about everyone knows Transformers all over the world. And uh, if not from the toys and the '80s cartoons, then from the live-action movies, which you know, we can debate the quality of those, but still, they they, uh, you know, Transformers is hugely popular. But now you've given it uh, gravitas. All right. Um, Next slide, Jason. And here we go. This is um, this is this is the San Diego Comic Con Ashcan, which was your first look at Transformers One, published in black and white. So I think, technically, Dan, this is the first proper Transformers cover you did that came out. Sure. Yeah, your first Optimus, anyway. Yeah, it was one of my first tries at Optimus, and I'm very happy with it. Um, a challenging challenge, uh, for sure, but one that I think came out well. Underneath the tape is a uh, alternate head for Spike that I decided against. So right. So for people who don't know, he there's that little bit of blue tape there. It's uh, it's a ta it's it's holding in place uh, Spike's new head. 
So Andy, yeah, my favorite Transformers toy to play with, obviously, was Optimus Prime. I, I, I usually, like, with music and, and superheroes and, like, X-Men and almost everything in my life, I do enjoy having and talking about the deep cuts, even in my wrestling. New Japan Pro Wrestling, All Japan Pro Wrestling, uh, you know, Tokyo Joshi Pro Pro, uh, pro Wrestling. Uh, things that maybe people haven't necessarily heard of, but when it comes to Transformers... I'm the a lister baby. Optimus Prime. Uh, next, Jason. Ooh, Sebastian. If I had to pick a favorite action live-action Transformers movie, it would probably be none of them. But if you have to make me, if I have to do one, it would probably be Bumblebee. And here we have a small piece. Uh, and this yep. is a letters column art, right? Yep. And this is... Um, this is, of course, a rendering of the G1 toy. Yeah, goes in line with, with the question we just had. With the fists, which you, I think you told a very sad story about uh, your experience oh, with your, your, your Optimus Prime toy. Which was, uh, you took the toy on the school bus and you lost the hands on the bus. Right. I never got those hands back. And Optimus just isn't the same without hands. Nope. Yeah. He looks so dumb without hands. So sad. Uh, next, next slide, Jason. This is cool. Now, yeah, if you're it's on a big if, piece of paper, yeah, yeah. If you're like a '70s, '80s, a Bronze Age, Copper Age kid, you remember box art from Marvel Comics. This is this is Optimus Prime box art. So this will be available at the drop. So they won't all be, you know, giant pieces or pages. Which we're trying to give uh, give people some options or more chances to to come away with with something from the drop. Right next to this cool drawing, you have a failure. Right next to the, the legit drawing. So there you go. Me trying and failing to sketch out Optimus. We didn't cut it out. We left it all there, and people can do with it what they want. But it looks cool. Yep. All right. Uh, Next slide, Jason. All right, here we have um, vehicle designs, right? Yep. And tell us about these. Uh, these are some uh, vehicle designs that I think Hasbro wanted to see. Um, and I remember being like, why do I have to draw these? Just look at the cartoon. <laughs> um, but Hasbro, I think, was hoping for some updated, more 2022-style, uh, 2023-style designs. Which I, uh, you know, was like, man, uh, stick to the classics. Told, huh? Yeah, and I'm like, well, if Optimus is a cab over, and he will be a cab over, or otherwise, I won't do the book. Uh, everything else should just, you know, be the same. And uh, so that's what we have here, which is mostly me, kind of uh, just, you know, being very blunt. Like this is kind of what we're doing. <laughs> All right. Um, next slide, Jason. And here we go. This is Transformers number one cover, the Autobot yep. variant. So all the Autobots from the first arc, I guess, are on this cover. And 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 so people watching, you know, when you when you uh, when you see it on the site, just know that it's kind of pieced together. All these Autobots are drawn separately, so you could, you could position them how you wanted. Um, yeah, and also uh, Spambound really wanted to show each uh, Autobot separately as like a big, a, like kind of a, a daily event. And so I thought it would be a fun experiment to just draw them on different layers and kind of do them like animation cells where I, they're all on transparency paper. So each one is on a different layer. And uh, I drew in white out or I painted in white out behind them so that they would be trans, they would be opaque. Uh, as I placed each one over each one. So, yeah. It's kind of, it was a cool experiment. Hmm. Uh, B BYJ Prescott says, uh, this is a poor cover. <laughs> so I'm guessing, I'm guessing BYJ Prescott is a Transformers fan, which again, to our earlier point, very <laughs> difficult to please, can be, you know? So anyway, sorry it's not for you, BYJ, but, I'm sure it'll be for someone. 
Uh, and here we go. Here's the <laughs> here's the here's the Decepticon counterpart. Another poor cover, BYJ. Yeah, another poor cover, tell, BYJ. Me, tell us what you think. <laughs> you can be honest. So these are these I did on. Uh, so Starscream is on a piece of Bristol board, and then yeah. so so he's like on the paper, and then the other ones I actually cut out that are on um, like uh, vinyl paper. So uh, and I taped them all down because I am insane. Um, I just if I can uh, quickly just if I can be totally straight. When Skybound asked me to do these two covers, mm-hmm. they said my editor was like, "Look." I know this is not going to be cool, yeah. but this is what we want to do for marketing wise, and it right. will translate to covers. Right. And I was like, okay, sure. Like, I'm not going to say no. And also, it was my first time drawing all these characters too, so it was a bit of a struggle. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, also, I was trying to figure out a way to have some sort of interesting artifact left over that wasn't just five different pieces of paper with a different character on it. It was very important to me that it it could all exist in one physical space. So there'd be some sort of artifact that people could enjoy and appreciate uh, beyond just the actual cover that you buy on the stands. So all right, I want to so we'll, see what BYJ says. You know what? Uh, let's, 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 uh, let's, let's correct the record. BYJ did not mean poor. He, he's, he's since uh, clarified what he meant. He, uh, he meant power. This is a power cover. Okay, thank you, BYJ. Not sure I believe you, but okay, thank you. I believe BYJ. Thanks for the clarification, brother. Love all you, right. dude. Don't worry about it. You're all good. <laughs> all right, and and now uh, now we're getting into it. Now we're getting into it. Next slide, Jason. Oh, and here we go. This is the cover you saw today. If you're lucky enough to pick up a copy a shop this is the regular cover for transformers number one first cover, printing yeah. um they, they already announced the second printing covers this cover will not be reprinted again uh so yeah if you haven't grabbed your first printing yet try your best don't wait yes so you know this is uh this is sort of you're going for the you know iconic number one you know Power, not poor, pose. Uh, and I think you got it. Yeah. I also feel so good about this cover. You know, a lot of the earlier images of the Transformers that I was doing, uh, I was not super happy with because I was learning. And, you know, when I was thinking about doing Transformers, actually, I'll just take you into my studio. Sorry, I'm in my living room right now. But Ooh, uh, a, t- yeah. a tour. Let's see here. Let me see if I can find, because I'm on my iPad, so I'm mobile today. Hmm. Um, I'll show you. So when Skybound was talking to me about the possibility of doing Transformers, um, I I didn't say yes right away. Don't mind my AEW title belt here. Um, I didn't say yes right away, but I, I did start drawing them right away. Um, so I have some, I'm going to put you, set you down here for a second. So you're looking at my ceiling, but here is, this is volume 44. I'm pretty sure this is when I was starting to draw the Autobots and Optimus Prime. So I was immediately started, it's earlier than this. It's not volume 44. These are my sketchbooks. Let's see volume 43. This is from November 2022 to December 2022. So I think this is about the, yeah, so here we go. So here's a, here's me trying to figure out how to draw Optimus Prime. So you can see it's a little, it's a little rough. And if actually, if you go back earlier into the sketchbook, you'll see other versions sorry one sec you'll see other versions of me trying to figure out how to draw optimus prime you can see he's not quite right not a little awkward so uh this was the uh kind of like me seeing can i do this 
can I figure out how to draw this? And what you have with that issue one cover is a full um, realization of that practice and hard work. Um, you know, because like I, I even just thinking about the the idea of working on transformers is like it's time to really figure out how to draw Optimus Prime, whether I sign this contract or not. Um, so when I did sign the contract, it was kind of like, well, now I can put all this hard work to, uh, to use. And that's what you have. All right. Well, let's get into it. We are going to be checking out every single page from this issue, which is an oversized issue. Regular comic issues, about 20, 22 pages. This is 30 pages of DWJ awesomeness. Um, so everyone who is here in the chat who's watching, you guys are motivated, clearly, and uh, the drop is going to be happening soon. Keep an eye out for the newsletter. Uh, there are going to be 30 pages going to 30 new homes, and I wish you guys all the luck, but here we go. Next slide, page one. Uh, this is really cool. You have, um, I like this page a lot. So you have uh, five panels, five vertical panels, you know, widescreen panels, each with a different scene. So. This 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 you kind of uh, telling us what we're about to get into? Yeah, it's mostly me just trying to give a vibe, um, trying to tell a bunch of, trying to do a bunch of things at once, storytelling wise, visual wise, and um, you know, uh, Optimus doesn't show up for a few pages, and I really wanted to draw him like on the first page, so this is how I got there. <laughs> Sneaky. All right, uh, next slide, Jason. And here we go. This is um, this this page is I no transformers, no. But this is very DWJ. Uh, yeah. That 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 giant top panel with the, you know the characters in in that crazy detailed environment. Uh, this is pure DWJ. We've seen this before. You do this so well. So for those of you who are DWJ fans, not necessarily Transformers fans, well, you don't need to pay the the robot premium. You got the you got the human characters, which is really uh, what DWJ is about. So anyway, this and is gives kinda... us a, gives us a path in emotionally to our transformer characters. So mm -hmm. it all starts here. You, know, you can't go wrong with any of these pages. Um, you know, of course, I understand a lot of you are going to be focused on transformers, but you, for the DWJ fans, I think you also know what you're looking for too, and it's not necessarily robots. Here we go. Another page, and you're introducing all our characters. We're getting, at it. We're, we're learning about them. Yep. T tell us about this page. And you, you just have a thing for vans, don't you? I love vans. I love heavy metal vans, and also like without telling us, without telling the audience anything in words, um, you know, the fact that Carly has painted this van herself gives you a little insight into her character and gives you a little bit of that character salt which just allows you to really appreciate and sink your teeth into the characters just that much more and make the story more fun and inviting um, without necessarily having to burden the story with dialogue. So that's what you have here. Next slide, Jason. And this is sort of, uh, now that we've gotten to know our characters. I love uh, this page. Yeah, tell us about it. Well, the van is drawn really well. Um, I. There are little visual things that help people understand what a scene is, is about and what something is. So like that, if you scroll to the top panel, that like little hiking trail thing, you know, it was such a quick Google image of like hiking trail entry point, you know, it's just like this little tiny thing. There's like little details of like the little triangle, like mini roof. I mean, things that we've seen so many times when going hiking and it's just was so much fun to draw and use in a storytelling way. I don't know. Uh, it's just like a random nerd thing. And also I was very loose with the mountain because I just wanted to be gestural with such a tight foreground and have some extra contrast that way. Next page, Jason. Yeah, um, I, as I was going to say, you know, the first few pages sort of introduce us to these characters, uh, setting things up, and uh, this is really when, you know, things are, the adventure really begins right here. 
also um, I'm very bad at drawing characters falling, um, like falling down. It's easy to draw characters going like like to the side. It's hard to have characters like falling down. So um, the bottom left panel is one of my favorites in the entire series so far of me drawing Transformers. Yeah, I may have peaked with that panel. So simple, so perfect, just does the right, just does everything right. I love it, Dan, because honestly, like uh, on first, on my first flip through the art, uh, that didn't stand out to me. But now that you say it, it's it is it's lovely. Thank you. Yeah. Um, and Nick Nick Pitar is bouncing out because uh, he wants to avoid spoils spoilers. Thanks for being here, Nick. Appreciate it. See you, Nick. Uh, you know, Nick Nick's going to be in uh, New York Comic Con for those of you going to be there, and you're going to be able to hold his book, Axe Wielder John. In person, he's going to bring copies. I can't wait. He also has the uh, the artist edition uh, version, which I uh, which will be debuting at the show. But in any case, thanks a lot, Nick, for for stopping by. Uh, next page, Jason. Boom, boom. This is this is crazy. This is uh, this is kind of like uh, you know in Alien when they 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 come across the derelict ship, you know. But here you go. I mean, people are talking about scale. I mean, the scale of this thing is 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 yeah, is immense. Um, and, and this is a splash page to me. You know, I know strictly speaking, maybe sure. the inset panels disqualify it, but to me, this is this is a splash page. Well, the inset panels all lead your eye um, to the bottom part of the next page. Can we go to that one? Let's go next page. Um, so you start, uh, the goal with this was to have those inset panels lead into uh, Carly and Spike um, walking out from that, like, from the, where they are into this big scape, and then your eyes kind of going up into the composition rather than taking things from left to right, top down. And, and, and here, here we go. Our first introduction to Transformers in, in, you know this this new Energon universe. I mean, they're not heroic at all. They're thrashed. Yeah. I mean, they're just completely wrecked. Um, I'm not sure how many other storytellers would have introduced them this way, but but there you go, DWJ. Heck yeah. Next slide. Thanks for the compliments, guys. Appreciate it. Here we've got some screen tone on the uh, middle panel, middle left panel. So that's on the board. Um, and Mike Spicer did a wonderful job of color holding the lines on the last panel. Um, I'm also a big fan of the uh, M, uh, the undulating M's at the bottom of the page too. Very, very happy with how that turned out. Next. And you know what? Uh, apparently, Starscream has a ton of fans. Oh, yeah. Uh, and Including me. And he's, a, he's, he's kind of the big bad here. Yes. And uh, the top panel of this page is uh, one of my favorites in the issue. It does so much. You got the undulating M's. You have the information of what's happening, but it's also dynamic and it's also hinting at what's to come story-wise with Carly and Spike using Starscream's actual arm as cover. Uh, so it's so big, they don't even realize what they're, you know, touching until it lifts up above them. Oh, I don't impress myself that often, but I am very impressed with this. <laughs> I hope that's go. okay to say. It is. Uh, next page, Jason. And this is a biggie. This is this is spoiler time, guys. So Dan, uh, Nick actually bugged out at exactly the right time. So if you haven't read it, I'm sorry, but this is big. And this is spoiled on the, in case you didn't know, this is what was spoiled on the Ian Bertram cover. Um, Starscream just flat out kills Bumblebee. I mean, Bumblebee didn't even get a chance to do anything. And and pow, um, and that that story wise that tells us so much. Hey, this Starscream is a right bastard. 
And, and you know, Bumblebee is one of the main Autobots. He's a big fan favorite. And, and Dan just, just wipes him out. He didn't even get to do anything. Dan just heartlessly wipes him out. But there you go. Uh, somebody asked what me and Mike went over um, before starting this series. Mike Spicer, my colorist. And I just sent Mike a bunch of screenshots from the 86 movie. And I said, make it look like this. All right, this this is this is what all the fans are going to love, and uh, this is what really gets art collectors crazy too. Uh, next page. Oh, this you were on the next page, so yeah, this is just just fights, man, action, duking it out. Heck yeah, the way it should be. Uh, and, my first uh, real, my first real combat that I ever drew in Transformers was here. And and few do it better than than DWJ and oh shucks well and and DWJ does it like no one else I mean you know it's this is not anything you've seen before case in point next slide yeah I wonder who's gonna get this page yeah this is full on armbar oh. <laughs> you know this is hilarious and 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 you you're going back to the speed line so this is yes. Yeah, this is very reminiscent of one of my favorite pages in Do a Power Bomb, where Cobra Sun is clotheslined by uh, Rangabang, and uh, I make no, I, I I basically stole from my own comic book, and I make no apologies for it. <laughs> it was so good, you could you could use it again. Yeah, hundred percent. Why not? And the next page is 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 the one you know you know when people are reading like oh you know oh. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, part of me was like, well, I, I had Optimus doing a uh, Rainmaker, uh, Rainmaker clothesline, which is a wrestling move on the previous page. And with this one, he's doing a German super, uh, suplex, which is another wrestling move. And I was like, do I go back to back wrestling moves page after page? I thought about it for a while. And then I was like, you know what? I think I do. I think I do. And just lean in to who I am as a person and my loves and, uh, I actually, I'll have you all know that I took my Masterpiece toys and modeled this my, for myself at the drawing desk of Optimus giving Starscream a suplex. And yes, it does work if you use the right toys. Um, you know, how many hundreds of Transformers comics have there been through multiple publishers and, and all the different uh, stories that have been told through the various mediums? I, I, I'm certain that's the first time that has ever happened. Any way you can make something new, you, you go for it. All right, and 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 we continue. Next page. So this is a, a bit of a shout out to a uh, one of my favorite Transformers artists, Jeff Senior. I believe he is a British guy, um, and he is famous for very blocky and cartoony Transformers illustrations. He did some of the Marvel books back in the day, uh, and he did a bunch of the Transformers uh, European comics too. I think he did a little bit of IDW stuff. Um, but a fantastic illustrator. I've always wanted to meet him because I'm a big fan. And, uh, you know, my style is not really like his, but I was I was not, like, actively trying to ape him or anything in panel one, but he was. I was definitely Google imaging him a bunch during this page. And um, also Ratchet is, like, this is a Ratchet, the character, the medical bot. He's so blocky anyway that, again, I just thought it was time to lean in and just go for it. So that's kind of what you have here. Next page, Jason. I mean, this is the the uh, uh, this is just nonstop. This is why I say this is you know James Cameron doing Transformers, not Michael Bay. It's just there's there's no let up here. Yep. First time I had to draw the gun. Um, after uh, this page, I printed out this page on like a little eight and a half by eleven, and just so I could refer back to how to draw Optimus's gun because there's a million ways to do it, and so I liked that middle panel so that was my reference for the rest of the book and the the uh the the again the masterpiece toy was that the model i mean it's those toys are like so you know what i don't here. like the way optimus's optimus prime's gun looks with the masterpiece toys mm, okay i kind of made i kind of made my own version all right even better yeah next slide very heavy with the inks on this page yes this felt right um, 
I, uh, I, I like this page a lot, but my friends, I have a Skype group that I talk with almost every day. It's got uh, people like, I'm not going to name drop, but R Riley Rossmo, uh, Ryan Stegman, Jason Howard, uh, Brian Level, some fantastic illustrators, and they all loved this page. So there you go. I'm a sucker for a lot of heavy black inks, so. Just on that basis alone, even though I've I'm been using, I've been doing them more and more. They're, they're just a really good tonal shift. You know, you kind of have hope with Optimus Prime going for the gun in the page before, and now we're going dark. And also, like Optimus is mostly black uh, in this, which just you know, it's really fun to play with those blocky shapes when you can throw them into shadow like that. Really fun. All right, uh, next page, Jason. One of my favorites. Yeah. It's kind of, it, it's it's sort of like all of it is on this page. Uh, I, would, I would agree. Yeah. I spent so much time on that panel, Spike, looking at Optimus with Optimus in the background there. Um, yeah, I put all I had into it. It's not a big panel, but it sells a lot of what the book is about for sure. Uh, next page, Jason. Yeah, Very also... happy with the lettering in panel two. Um, and the devil may care approach to the lines in panel one. You know, I just went for it. Uh, a lot of this page, I was just flowing. I remember feeling very good about this page. So can I say I love the bottom panel? And this bottom panel is probably my favorite panel of the entire issue. Why? It's because it, it's just it's it's uh, it just gets your blood pumping, you know. And and to me, this shows so much about these two characters that they have that potential for heroism. And here we go, here they go, you know. I mean, this this is a, a just a, a, a this you know, they know with no regard for their own safety, they're going to do this to help help the Optimus. Oh, um, yeah. And it's just it's just it's just really. Um, I don't know. Just get your blood pumping. Yeah, I love it too. I really love this one. Next page. We're 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 a little over halfway through, guys. You're getting a show. Thank you all for tuning in. Yeah, thank you everybody for being here. Um, love this one too. Definitely was using toys as reference for a lot of this. Uh, I have a. A smaller Soundwave toy that I use, a uh, uh, a New Age is a it's a third party company that I use, and I also have a um, a uh, oh my gosh, a Magic Square Optimus Prime that I use for my Optimus Prime like kind of ref. So there you go. Um, I'm just gonna interrupt real quick because Xerxes has a comment. He says, "Dan, off topic, Batman Joker Deadly Duo number five cover that joker cover is amazing and it's how i found your artwork sorry for going off topic we're all over your tf work too so the reason i bring this up is because the guy who owns the original art is actually in the chat so was, oh I, awesome. I know he was very happy with the cover and uh there you go it's a it's an amazing cover every once in a while you get a special one and i felt, feel really good about that thank you very much xerxes all right um and this next cover may be the money shot let's go or the next page let's go oh yeah Oh, good times. Yeah, that I mean that top panel with with uh, Optimus blasting his his uh, that cannon. Yeah. Oh. Uh, that this is also a paste over. Optimus was ha did have his legs spread at first. That's why you see that big leg um, to the right. And I was very frustrated. I was trying to pull this one out from the uh, from a bad place, and I did. I managed to pull it back. I was losing it. Um, sometimes you feel the way a page is going to go, and it's not good. You feel bad about it. So, uh, yeah. Pulled it back. And, and and I'm not kidding. Like, all of this just feels so cinematic. And it feels like, you know, these aren't really movie storyboards. But I could you could, you could visualize all this happening on a big screen. Uh, case in point, uh, really next next page um yep 
you know, uh, Optimus with the with the, with his two human friends charging with explosions behind him. I mean, how, you know, that's 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 a total movie moment. I was talking with my editor because um, they didn't have any notes for me or anything on this page or anything, but I was re rereading or re looking through my art. And I was like, you know what? I wonder, maybe I should have drawn Optimus Prime a little bigger so he takes up more of the panel. And it's, cause it's such a big moment. And uh, my editor was like, yeah, that might have been a good idea. But it's not like it was uh, drastic enough for me to like go in and change it. But right before we went to print, I was just like, it was really bothering me. So I like, I digitally, I, uh, I like kind of selected with a magic wand i selected optimus prime i made him bigger i made made it all pretty it took me like a half hour maybe 45 minutes of my time and uh it didn't look as good my instincts were right <laughs> so uh don when i when coming when deciding on sound effects a lot of times it's just what i'm feeling and hearing in my head that blah is kind of like a han zimmer kind of like blah, you know uh shameless uh shameless copying of, of on Zimmer, so uh, yeah, cinematic so, is the way to go. So you 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 do have like a like a movie soundtrack kind of playing in your head when you're coming up with these scenes, huh? Totally. Cool. Uh, next page, Jason. So this is not a double page splash. This is published in the book like a, like a regular orientation. It's, reader yeah. just has to flip it. I didn't have enough room for a double page splash, and then I also even start. Just for fun, I was like, what would this look like as a double page splash? And the trailer is so long that it actually would not have worked as a double page spread. It would have been too uh, tall. It would have been too tall. There would have been too many speed lines. I would have had to make the... Um, the already, you see already here how close Optimus is to the edges in this trailer and um, cab form. So I, uh, this actually just worked out really well. So... Sometimes not having enough space is beneficial. So whoever gets us, you you, you got a DPS on a single page. So congrats Basically. in advance. Uh, uh, you know, another pure movie moment. Next page. I mean, this this, this top half of the page, you know. Yeah. yeah. Hurt me. I was cramming a lot into this page. I was wor worried that it would not get cut off. I was worried that the bottom was going to get cut off, but we got lucky. I managed to squeeze everything in. Awesome. Yeah. Really happy with this one. Uh, that top panel took me freaking forever. I'm not complaining. It just did. Well, we haven't seen all the pieces yet, but has there been a piece like, like you would keep out of the ones we've seen so far? Maybe the Optimus Rainmaker, the clothesline one. Hmm. Um. I kind of love them all. So, you know, it's like I didn't want to hang on to the whole issue. Um, so, I don't know. When we split up for future issues, there are pages that, honestly, people might consider kind of throwaway that I will, might want to hold on to. Yeah, this the sil a silhouette against the moon, your, your favorite panel in the whole book, you know. And I don't think uh, anyone would appreciate it as much as, as you, right? So Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Next page, Jason. I think we're going to start getting into a, like a, a dogfight time. This is going, uh, this is leading into one of my favorite panels in the book. Um, I don't like doing the Spider-Man flying through the city where you have to draw Spider-Man like four times style of storytelling. But um, it worked for this Jetfire. But I don't do this often. Uh, uh, almost never. So uh, that's a rare thing for me to do. I don't plan on doing that again. Steve Wu says, I can't believe this issue didn't sell complete. Great news for us little guys. Great news indeed. But that was uh, that was a bit of a conscious decision because we really wanted to have a big event. This is the one thirty page issue. You know, we had all the variant covers. We had comics to go with it. Um, they really wouldn't have been able to do this with, with another, you know, shorter issue. So this is, this is going to be a lot of fun guys. Girl, right. Glowing comics asks, Hey Dan, was it hard to decide when, when to simplify the transformers designs made some very bold decisions, which I dig. Thank you. Glowing comics. I would say it was mostly a gut thing. And a lot of that pro came 
during the process of me just sketching them out in my sketchbook and having fun. And if something was not fun to draw, I just did not add it. So there you go. Next page. Aerial yeah, the, uh, this panel top right. Ooh, it's like perfect. It's just like, it just works. It just works. Very, very, very happy with this page. And the uh, notice the cast shadow on Jetfire on that top right panel from Star Screen passing overhead. Hell yeah. Boo. De -de -de -de. All right, let's keep going. Next page. Here you go. The, the giant DWJ panel. Yep. And this it is took this a while. Is a... So like a abandoned quarry. I had to like Google image a bunch of stuff and I hate doing uh I hate working off digital screens, so I print everything out next to me and I just kind of pick and choose little details here and there. So that's like ten different stone quarries I looked up all in all in one image. And I love that baby panel of Optimus looking over, just like using a bunch of ink and just using it as a kind of a, you know, he transforms and then there's a pause before he addresses Jetfire. Next page, Jason. Home stretch here, guys. We're coming to the end. Enjoy. Oh, man. This is a, this is a heart, heart rending scene. Yep. It's uh, Optimus and Jetfire. Yep. Love Optimus' leg in set panel two. Just got it right. It's really starting to come into my own here with drawing the characters. Relying less on the masterpiece. Yeah, and just starting to feel it out, getting a more getting more into the flow. Feels felt really good. Yeah. Love that. Next last page, panel. Jason. I feel really good about this top panel. Poor Russ. Uh, poor Russ Wooten, my letterer. I completely forgot to give him room in panel two. I'm so sorry, Russ. I was trying to get across how much Soundwave cares for Ravage in that moment without talking about it. And a scene change in the middle of the page, which I don't love to do, but... I had a lot to get done and a lot of story to tell and not enough time. So, yeah. And the next page is another semi splash page. Yep. So for you, uh, Starscream guys, this is Starscream going nuts. At the electrical plant. Yep. Uh, notice, can we zoom in on Starscream in the middle? Um, there's some cast shadow from the, uh, from the from the metal that I'm just really happy with on Starscream, so I just wanted to highlight that. All right, and uh, next page is the last page, final page of issue one, and uh, what a way to end it! Um, not just a throwaway moment because we're going to learn more. I I read ahead. I'm sorry, but um, this 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 has consequences. But here's again, you stars Starscream just just. Blew away Bumblebee, so he has no qualms squishing humans, and you even spelled it out. I used some uh, toothbrush effect here, which I don't often do, but I thought, because this Hasbro definitely wanted this death to be off screen, which is totally fair. Um, and, uh, you know, in line with the tone of this of the book, which I, I also, I completely agreed with that um, note. They, they gave that to me before I even drew it. And, um, uh, but at the same time, I was like, well, if I can't show it, I'll get really nasty with it. So, and I did. So there you go. All right. So uh, are you done with the first six issues already? I am not. I am drawing issue four. I'm right in the middle of drawing issue four as we speak. But you'll get caught up by the time uh, issue six comes out and you're you're on a monthly schedule from here on out? Release? Monthly schedule, yep. Okay. Um, uh, more well, female Transformers besides just RC. Ooh. 
I am interested, and I can't say any more about that until you read more of the series. I'm sorry that I have to be keep that shrouded in mystery. Okay, so, you know, this is all the art that's going to be at the drop, guys. You all saw it. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, thank you, Jason, for helping. Thanks, Yams, of course, for just hanging out. Uh, and uh, and no doubt, uh, DWJ, you are the man of the hour. This is this is huge. Uh, okay, let's Do see. We, how many... Are we saying? Are we saying when the art's going to go up? Uh, it's going up soon. Make sure you sign up to the newsletter at FelixComicArt.com because you will get an announcement as to when the art will be available. Uh, let's see how many people are now dropping. That's what you have dropping. Okay, now those of you who have hung on, we got a extra bonus surprise for you. I told you there'd be surprises. So if you hung on to the end, this is better than uh, uh, the after credits scene because you're going to be the first to see art from issue two. If you picked up issue one today, you are dying to see what's going to happen in issue two. And you're going to see the original art from issue two. Not all of it, but you hung on. You're going to get a treat. Um, let's go, Dan. Let's go. We're going to do it. Okay. Jason, next slide. Cover of, of, of issue two. And, and, uh, uh, uh you know, again, for Starscream fans, this is, this is the greatest Starscream cover ever drawn ever in, in, uh, in Transformers comics history. This, this is just so killer. There was somebody... In uh, on the two thousand five and uh, Transformers boards that said, "This is a terrible Star Scream." Uh, th this Star Scream well, looked did, like it was did, drawn did, by did, a twelve year old. Did his, did his name happen to start with BYJ? <laughs> for for with BYJ. Yeah. But um, uh, this 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 pilot might be, and this might not just be some generic red shirt. I'll say no more. I'll say no more. Okay. Um. Let's let's get into this. So it's so, uh, a very much a change in tone um, as we start off issue uh, issue two. Next page. Yep. Uh, Optimus in nature. Appreciating the world for what it is, and the first time ever experiencing Earth for real, not inside a ship. What's the uh, what's the uh, the sound effect there on the the bottom panel? That's a crunch. <laughs> oh boy, do do we dare? Do we dare? Uh, next page, guys. What to tell us what's what's happening here? Well, I think it it speaks for itself. Um, but uh, yeah, it's uh, Optimus has accidentally stepped on a deer. And this he gives is, him perspective and context. Devast devastated. Devastated. Again, total, this is total DWJ, man. This is, this never would have happened with anyone else. Okay, uh, next page. And he's building his relationship with Spike. Spike is sort of his, um, his, uh, uh, I guess, conduit, his, 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 his guide to, um, to Earth, right? Uh, yeah. And uh, let's just do one more. Can we do one more page, Dan? Uh, okay. All I right. might get in trouble. <laughs> or should we just stop here? Uh, well, why don't we, why don't we let the well, we'll let the, we'll let the we'll let the chat room vote, guys. Should should we uh, indulge our selfish impulses and see the next page at the chance that uh, Dan might get in trouble? I think everyone wants to see the page. I don't think anybody cares, Dan. I think everyone wants to see the page. All right, let's go, Jason. Next page. This will be the final page, but what a kick-ass page. This is a yeah. kick-ass page. Again, so much black. Is that Cybertron in the back? That is Cybertron. Wow. Okay, for you for you Transformers nerds, you got to love that. Even BYJ. BYJ, come on now. Don't be a hater. This is This is badass. All right, and then uh, there's going to be a lot more craziness after this. That's issue two, guys. Uh, that's what you have to look forward to. And uh-oh, 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 and uh, -oh, uh, -oh, uh, -oh. uh Go back. Go back a page. You're not supposed to see that. You're not supposed to see that. Okay. Um. Wow. Okay, for real now.
for real, Dan. This was so much fun. Uh, I think everyone watching had a blast. Congratulations again on this, you know, this this craziness. Sellouts everywhere. Uh, hun yeah, 150,000 so copies. Thanks, you know, a second printing. But uh, as we as we do, guys, as we do, we like to give away a prize. And oh, so uh, if, if, if those of you who have hit the like button are eligible to win a prize. So hit that like button. And then uh, I, I need you guys to leave a comment. Jason, are we good for uh, for doing a drawing if, uh, off people's comments? I'm going to I'm going to hopefully assume yes. Uh everyone it's 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 the DWJ show. So just type in DWJ and we're going to do a drawing. And we're going to do a drawing for our exclusive Ballin variant cover that Dan will sign. That Dan will sign. Yep, DWJ. Those of you uh, it's uh again, it it pays to hang on to the end. It pays to hang on to the end. Just type in DWJ. DWJ, and you're going to win. Who's going to win? This is, uh, there's 150,000 copies of uh, the regular first print. The second print is going to push that up to however many. There are less than 1,000 copies of this variant. All right, did uh, we got one oh one hundred and one entries still coming in? Still coming in. People paying attention. Okay, just uh, enter once, please. Don't uh, don't keep don't don't keep typing your name. Just enter once. Be fair. Yes, BYJ. We'll we we'll even let you uh, participate because that's how kind we are. All right, I think we're I think we're good to go. Let's go. Jason, go draw. Here we go. Here we go. Coming down. Who is it gonna be? Aditya, Aditya. Oh, we know Aditya. Aditya, you won. Congrats. Buddy. Yeah, you can pick actually you can pick up your copy at uh, New York Comic Con. I don't have to send it to you. We'll see you in New York. But you know what? Um our variant didn't just come in a, a color. We also had the original art replica, which is my personal favorite. There you go. It folds out into uh, the, you can see uh, all, this is just what the original art looks like. So let's let's go again. Can we go again? Yeah, he hit it again. Who's gonna win? Who's gonna win? Is it Ditya gonna get both of them? Sean B. Sean B. I'm not sure I know who you are, Sean B, but congratulations. I what was the name. You see the name of it was like stink stinker butts or something. That I, I'm glad you won, Sean B. Yeah. Uh make sure you write me, Felix Comic Art at gmail.com. Otherwise, I won't know who you are or where to send this to. But this will all these will all get signed and sketched by Dan next week. And uh they'll get sent out uh over the next couple weeks after that. So congratulations. Yeah, yep, congratulations to Ditya. Congrats to Sean B. And uh, most of all, congrats to, to you, Dan. Well deserved. Thank uh, you very kick much. ass, man. Kick ass. I can't, I can't okay. believe it. Getting to pay my mortgage with drawing pictures of Optimus Prime. It is something else. Um, and I think we're going to call it a night. I think that's it. So good night, guys. Thanks for Thank coming. Thank you, everyone.